Being thankful. We are to thank God consistently for His goodness, His eternal love, and His faithfulness. Here's Gene. Thankfulness is a theme that really runs through the Psalms, and particularly uh, these Psalms that have to do with praise and adoration and expressions, uh, especially the, the music that was written, the words that were written uh, for Israel and the worship in the Old Testament setting. Here's a very familiar passage uh, in terms of, of thanksgiving. In Psalm 100, uh, verses 4 and 5, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for Yahweh is good and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. A great passage. And the New Testament really affirms this. For example, when uh, the Apostle Paul was writing to the Thessalonians, notice what he says. Rejoice always. That's a spirit of, of joy, of happiness. Pray constantly. That really is a reflection of some of the things we've seen in the Psalms. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So Paul is affirming really what we read here in this, this psalm. Now, let me clarify something. In terms of what it means to give thanks in everything, I believe this is misinterpreted. And let me just, uh, let me give this to you as a statement. Paul was not teaching that we're to give thanks for tragedies. There are some people that in a very sen insensitive way have said in the midst of a tragedy, have you been able to thank God yet for this tragedy? To me, that's one of the most insensitive things you could ever say. Paul was not teaching that we're to give thanks for tragedies in our lives. But to be thankful, and here's what I believe he is teaching, but to be thankful that in these tragedies, God's goodness towards us, His love for us, His faithfulness to His promises concerning us will never fail. And that makes sense, doesn't it? To thank God in situations that, that are so painful that we can't understand, they're even caused by evil, evil people, wicked things that happen, innocent people, tragedies. Yet God is sovereign. And we can thank God in the midst of those difficult circumstances that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. In fact, the author of Hebrews captures that in uh, chapter 13, verse 5. Your life should be free from the love of money. And here he's dealing with material things. He says, be satisfied with what you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now, the fact of the matter is, there are times where we're human and we wonder where God is in the midst of this tragedy. But the fact is, by faith, with God's strength, we can thank God that He's with us. We may not understand it now, but we will understand it in eternity. We have God's presence with us. To affirm this promise, the author of uh, Hebrews also uh, quoted David or shared David's testimony, which really comes out of the 23rd Psalm. A paraphrase, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? It's interesting. In a reflection response question here, I, I want you to see a principle uh, that comes from a previous psalm. I've called this uh, Principle 53, and now here is Principle 95. How does Paul's experience in prison illustrate and affirm Principles 53 and 95 in these psalms? Well, here's Principle 53. I call this our eternal hope. And this was in the midst of darkness for David, if you go back and look at the psalm. When we face persecution, we should trust God being assured that evil people may be able to destroy our bodies, but never our souls. When you look at the principle we've just looked at from this psalm, principle 95, we are to thank God consistently for His goodness, His eternal love, 
in His faithfulness. Why? They may destroy our body, but never our souls. I think of Paul, Silas. And this is an amazing scene. They have been beaten. Blood is running down their backs. They're in chains. The inner prison in Philippi. And at midnight, at midnight, they're singing songs of praise to God. Now that's God's grace and that's God's strength. I could only hope that in a situation like that I would have that kind of grace. I see that in people's lives and I can only by faith say, Lord, I hope that if I'm ever in that circumstances, you'll give me that grace. And I believe God's promised that in the midst of those circumstances. And we can't really experience until we're in it. But that's a, a wonderful hope that we have. And Paul demonstrates that in his own life, in other, other situations. Praising God. And of course, you know the end of the story, that when they were singing praises, suddenly there's this incredible earthquake, and their chains fell off, and the doors of the prison flew open, and the jailer, the Philippian jailer, was just panicked. In fact, he took his sword and was going to kill himself because he knew that he would be killed because derelict of duty. That's how they would view it. They wouldn't, the Roman officials wouldn't see it as a miracle. Paul called out, don't do yourself any harm because we're all here. All the prisoners are here. And this is, this is an incredible scene where the jailer comes and falls at Paul's feet and Silas' feet said, what must I do to be saved? And there he's referring to salvation because he had heard Paul and Silas teaching about salvation and the coming of Jesus. And if we put our faith in him, we can be saved. What must I do to be saved? And he said, and these are classic words in the New Testament. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that's why we can enter into His courts with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. You know, throughout history, all generations have composed music from the Psalms, from other portions of Scripture to represent their praise and their adoration in their particular uh, point in time, their life. And one of those, more of a contemporary song, but it comes right from this psalm. Enter into His courts with thanksgiving. Let's close by listening and reflecting on these words.